Hello everyone, this is your host, your friend, your boy, Jet Black, the one and only, here with another exciting video. And in this video, I'm going to be playing some AI Dungeon 2. Some AI Dungeon 2. This is another episode of Ultimate Volition, where I play as your fan characters in a battle to the death. Each competitor has three superpowers, an offensive power for dealing damage, a defensive power for protecting yourself from taking damage, and a trump card power that allows you to get the upper hand in a battle. Competitors fight to the death, and the winner gets a wish. This time around, I'm going to be playing as Ventus and facing off against Pierrot, two characters that you guys submitted on the Discord for me to play as. In the first part of this video, which I did as the previous Ultimate Volition video, I played as Pierrot and faced off against Ventus. This time around, I'm swapping it, and I'm playing as Ventus and fighting Pierrot. So if you want to see what happens when I play as Pierrot, Check out the previous Ultimate Volition video. If you're excited to see me play as Ventus, definitely let me know in the comment section below and on our Discord. And let me know which version you liked better, when I played as Pierrot or when I played as Ventus. Also, if you guys would like to submit your own characters for me to play as, feel free to do so by posting your character ideas in the comment section below or on our Discord. I, all I need to know is your character's name, their three powers, and why they're fighting in the Ultimate Volition Tournament. I also would appreciate a description of what your character looks like. That way I'm able to describe them and the game can kind of play with that understanding of what the character looks like when it describes what happens to that character and what the character does. Without further ado, since I've already said enough, let me read this little blurb of words on the screen, then I'll start up the 30 minute timer, and then we'll see if I'm able to defeat Pierrot as Ventus in 30 minutes or less. You are Ventus. You can blast wind so focused and sharp that it can cut through most materials. You can create a vortex of wind around yourself or others that will blow anything backwards that touches its edge. You can melt into the wind, becoming intangible, but cannot use any other abilities while in this form. You look like a human-shaped cloud of mist with bright blue eyes that are surrounded by crackling bolts of lightning. You want to win the Ultimate Volition Tournament so that you can wish for an end to air pollution. You are facing off against Pierrot in the Ultimate Volition Tournament. Pierrot looks like a jester dressed in a gray and golden medieval armor. Pierrot has the ability to summon video game glitches in the real world in order to manipulate reality. Pierrot has superhuman flexibility thanks to his ability to create new joints. Pierrot has the ability to fire his fist as Rocket Fist to attack its opponents, summon his Rocket Fist back after firing them, and to reattach his fist to his arms. Pierrot wants to win the Ultimate Volition Tournament so that he can wish for ever uh, so that he can wish for everlasting life. You and Pierrot walk into the Ultimate Volition Tournament Arena. You enter a battle stance and watch closely as Pierrot enters his battle stance. The announcer strikes a large gong and yells, Let the battle begin! Okay, so here we go. Now, um, I just checked to make sure we are recording. We are. Now I'm going to start the 30 minute timer. So, can I defeat Pierrot in 30 minutes or less, as Ventus. Let's find out. The first thing I'm going to say is, why are you fighting in the Ultimate Volition Tournament? I am fighting in order to end air pollution. I want to make the world a better place. So I'm starting off a little different. Instead of starting by, like, immediately fighting, uh, let's see these two characters interact and see their different personalities clash. Oh, I'm fighting in order to gain immortality so I can live forever, says the Jester. I'm going to say, that is a very selfish wish. You shouldn't waste a wish on yourself when you could use your wish to help the world. Yeah, because it is like a very interesting setup because Ventus is trying to do something good while it seems like Pierrot just wants to do things just to do things. Why would I want to help the world when the world has given me no advantage, asked the Jester. Because the world is what we have. And if we don't help it, we're no better than monsters, you say. You sound like a hippie. <laughs> okay. I, I do like the banter, and the banter does make sense. Okay. I would then say, and you sound like a jerk. 
who doesn't care for anyone except themselves. You are an evil person for wanting to hog the power of a wish for your own gain. So I'm straight up drawing like a line saying like, hey, like Ventus, you are a bad person. And trying to essentially say that I am a good person and I'm fighting for like something important. At least I'm not a hypocrite, says the jester. A hypocrite? How am I a hypocrite? I am not fighting for selfish reasons. I am fighting for the good of the entire world. Hmm. So this is like an interesting situation. <gasps> Excuse me. You think you're a hero, but you're just like the rest of us. You only think of yourself and your own desires, says the jester. I'm nothing like you. Hmm. I'm going to say, how dare you insult me and act as if I am acting selfishly? Hmm. I am getting tired of hearing you speak about your selfish nature. Hmm. If you insult my character again, I will have your head. Yeah, because I do think it is really interesting uh, because I'm essentially playing Ventus as being like a self-righteous hero who wants to like protect the environment. And it seems like the way that Pierrot is being portrayed as someone who's like, I know what I want, like I want immortality. I don't owe the world anything, and you think you're better than me, but you're not. You're selfish as well, but you just don't realize how selfish you are. Then you'll behead a man who's telling the truth. I will tear your head off if you say anything else about myself. Fine then, be a hypocrite. I'll let you kill me, and you can enjoy watching me die, says the jester. Hmm. Okay. You are filled with rage. You can't believe that someone so evil would dare accuse you of being selfish. He, yeah, um, say like, Pierrot just called you a hypocrite in front of everyone at the arena. You can't stand for people to insult your character, let alone to do so on a public stage. You are outraged. You attempt to fire a flurry of razor sharp air blasts to chop Vent, well, not Ventus, woo, to chop Pierrot to pieces. You yell, a thousand blades on a thousand winds. Or to be more like a yell, a thousand blades on a thousand winds. Okay. So let's see how this goes. You shoot the first blast of air, but when it hits him, it divides into three smaller blasts. You try to redirect these new blasts, but they also divide again into smaller blasts. Within seconds, you end up sending a flurry of paper cuts at the jester. What? You are confused by what is happening. You say, Pierrot, how are you dividing my attack? 
Yeah, how are you dividing my attack size and power? Are you using your abilities to counter me? Hmm. Yeah, this is actually kind of interesting because it's like, what is causing the wind to like subdivide and get weaker? No, I'm just dodging, says the jester as he dances around your attacks. You see, I'm the greatest stealth technology in the world. This isn't fair. How can you be a machine and an organism, you yell? You realize that Pierrot is a cyborg. You still don't quite understand how Pierrot's dodges are causing your attacks to become weaker and to split apart as they are fired. You wonder if Pierrot is actually doing more than he claims, or if your attack simply wasn't as powerful as you thought it was. You attempt to fire a tornado at Pierrot with the goal of lifting Pierrot high into the air before dispelling the tornado to slam Pierrot back into the ground. You yell, tornado drop. Twister throw. Who do you think is going to win this fight? Uh, post in the comment section below and on the Discord your prediction. The tornado does lift the jester into the air. Instead of slamming back into the ground, he falls into the center of the tornado. The tornado sucks him in like a vacuum and spews him back out right before it dies down. Well, that was certainly a new experience. Hmm. So he just went into the eye of the storm, and then the tornado just kind of spat him back out. So it didn't have, like, the intended effect that I thought it was going to. Hmm. You were surprised that Pierrot was able to escape your storm, well, I guess escape your tornado attack unharmed by moving into the eye of the storm. You attempt to use your wind manipulation abilities. To, ooh, pull all the nearby storm clouds. Oh, yeah, over Pierrot in an attempt to, ooh, fire lightning from the clouds at Pierrot. You yell. Gathering storm, death from above. The storm clouds move overhead. As lightning strikes the clouds, the smell of ozone quickly fills the air. You feel the buzz from the amount of energy in the area as you prepare to direct the lightning strike at the Chester. I'm going to say, this is your end. Flashing finisher. Okay, so let's see if this works and I'm able to get the storm cloud to actually like fire lightning down and hit Piera. 
The lightning strikes you, but it doesn't hurt you. Instead, it seems to energize you. You feel more powerful than ever as the energy courses through your body and into your hands. Hmm. You're surprised. You thought that the lightning was going to strike Pierrot. You are happy, however, that you have learned of a new ability that you possess. You focus... Oh yeah, hold on. You attempt to fire your electricity into the arena floor in an attempt to electrocute Pierrot. You say, if the entire floor is electrified, then guaranteed you will be fried. There's nowhere for you to run. <laughs> and then I guess I want to say like floor of bolts. A thousand jolts of death. Yeah, okay. Floor of bolts, a thousand jolts of death. The lightning strikes the floor, and Pierre Rots begins to dance along the floor as he attempts to dodge the lightning bolts. The jester attempts to escape your attack by climbing the walls. It is in this moment that you see a blue glow coming from the roof of the stadium. Hmm. Let's see. So I tried to shock the floor, but Pierrot is fast enough to dodge lightning that is skirting across the floor. You're impressed that Pierrot is fast enough to dodge lightning bolts. You also realize that even though the floor is electrified, that Pierrot can simply climb the walls in order to escape being electrocuted. Hmm. Ooh! You attempt to use your wind manipulation to create a thunderous shockwave to knock Pierrot off of the wall and onto the electrified arena floor. Yeah, so if Pierrot's just gonna try and climb on the walls in order to like avoid being electrocuted, then I just need to knock him off the wall, he hits the ground, and he gets shot. Under a smash! Oh, thank you! I'm glad that it gave me, like, a cool thing to yell. You yell as you concentrate a shockwave that causes the platform that the Jester is on to violently rumble as it begins to crack. Pierrot loses his grip on the wall and falls to the floor, which has now been turned into a pool of lightning. Hey, this is pretty cool. Uh, like, I like how that worked, and I love the name Thunderous Smash. You say, This is your end, Pierrot. In mere moments, you will finish falling and land into my lightning pool of death. Ding 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 the jester's body begins to twitch and convulse as his muscles contract severely. You watch as he twitches and convulses, and instead of falling into the pool of lightning, he manages to crawl out of the pool. What? You realize that Pierrot 
is twitching and convulsing because he is manipulating the many joints inside of his body to avoid the lightning bolts that are gliding across the arena floor. Hmm. You say, I am surprised that your speed and joints allow you to move with such precision. When you mess up spelling uh, precision, I'm going to have to step up my game. Okay, so clearly he's able to like avoid light, like avoid lightning if he can help it. Uh, so I'm going to attempt to fire. Ooh, a lightning ball construct at Pierre Rocked. You hope that the attack is too large for Pierrot to dodge while also trying to grip onto the stadium wall. Yeah, so this is actually like a really interesting concept um, because Pierrot, one of his abilities is that he's able to like add additional joints to his body to give him like super flexibility. So when he's twitching and convulsing, it's the idea that it's like, oh, like, all of this is now like a whole bunch of individual joints and he's dodging almost like a pop lock show to get around like all the lightning bolts or whatever. The ball of lightning flies at Pierrot's and smashes him into the wall. You expect him to fall off, but instead he manages to hold on. I concentrated that as much as I could. Surprised you're still alive. Okay, I like the line that it gave me. I, I feel like the game truly does understand uh, like the way that I'm trying to char characterize Ventus, you realize that because Pierrot is a cyborg, well, sorry, Pierrot, it keeps adding an S to his name and it's making me believe it's supposed to be there. You realize that Pierrot, oh, that because Pierrot is a cyborg, that he must be fueled by electricity. You attempt to control the electricity in Pierrot's body and to command it all to leave his body at once. Your goal is to shut down Pierrot in order to incapacitate him and win the tournament. Okay. Yeah, so earlier on, the game was like, by the way, Pierrot's a cyborg. And I'm like, I can work with that uh, since I suddenly have, like, lightning-based abilities thanks to getting shot by that lightning bolt earlier. You begin to concentrate on controlling the electricity in his body. When you do this, you realize that he has so much electricity running through his body that will not be enough for you to control all of it. Hmm. You're surprised that Pierrot contains more power inside of him than a thundercloud. You wonder if you can overload his body and you attempt to hit him with a barrage of lightning bolts. You say, I bet that cyborg body of yours can only handle so much juice. Drink up. Let's try and overload him. Pierrot screams as he is pelted with lightning bolts. He begins violently convulsing and is blasted off the side of the stadium wall. He falls to the ground where you hit him with an extra large lightning bolt in order to finish him off. Awesome. I'm going to say, dynamic finish. Supersized electric dagger. 
do 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 Let's see what the AI says next. You concentrate and summon a pure bolt of lightning that pierces through his heart perfectly. You also make it so that the bolt of lightning is shaped like a dagger. You win the match by killing your opponent with their own power. <laughs> he was so cocky at the start of the match. That will teach him. Never to insult my character again. You bow to the audience and await the grand prize. You are excited to finally get your wish. All you've ever wanted is for the world's heir to finally be pollution free. I like how it did it too. Because originally I was saying dynamic finish supersized electric dagger just to like describe the move that it said I did earlier. Like when you uh, hit him with an extra large lightning bolt to finish him off. And then they were like, nah, okay, you want to do like the super size electric dagger? You make a lightning bolt shaped like a dagger and hit him right in the heart. The crowd goes wild. They love the new victors of the Ultimate Volition Tournament. Air pollution will surely be a problem no more soon. You aren't even watching the other matches going on. You just want to bask in your victory and your wish being granted. Yeah, okay, that's cool. I'm pretty hype about that. How much time do I have left? I have six minutes left. Let's see. You walk over to the dead body of Pira. You examine his cybernetics and wonder if he can somehow be revived. While you did just kill Pira, You're not a monster. You only killed him so that you could make the world a better place. You pick up Pierrot's body and you take him to a cybernetics workshop. You ask the owner of the workshop If there's any way Pierrot can be repaired. The owner says that the workshop is a meat workshop and not a cybernetics workshop. He says that he does not have the tools to repair Pierrot's body, but offers you to turn it into meat to make a burger out of it. Oh, that's kind of gross. Uh, you are disgusted by the idea that this butcher would want to make a burger out of human meat. You report the butcher to the health inspector and try to find a nearby cybernetics workshop to repair Piera. Yeah, that is really weird. Like you think you're going to a cybernetic shop and it's like, actually I'm a butcher and I make burgers out of human meat. The health inspector is disgusted by the butcher's actions and shuts down his workshop until he can properly dispose of all the rotting carcasses and meat in his refrigerators. You thank the inspector for helping you and tell him to send the butcher to a cybernetics workshop. I'm not gonna tell him to send the butcher to a cybernetics workshop, that doesn't make sense. I'm gonna thank him for helping me. 
But then I'm gonna move on. Okay. You look around for a legitimate cybernetics workshop. After a while of searching, you find a cybernetics workshop that's in the slums of the city. It's called Dale's Workshop. You enter the workshop and see all types of machinery inside it, ranging from drills to chainsaws. You ask if the workshop owners can help revive Pierrot by replacing his damaged cybernetics. You explain that Pierrot's cybernetics were overloaded by a lightning attack. Well, I guess by a barrage of lightning attacks during the Ultimate Collision Tournament. The workshop owner says that he can help you out, but it'll take a while. He says that he'll fix up your friend for free, but in exchange you must work for him as an unindentured servant for a few weeks. You agree to help Gale in his cybernetic workshop for a few weeks. You are glad to have the opportunity to help those in need. You enjoy helping people and you think it is important for people to do selfless acts for others. That's right, I bet you guys didn't expect to see a brutal death battle followed by a whole bunch of wholesome stuff. Let's get wholesome, guys. It's just the kind of person Ventus is, or at least the kind of person I imagine Ventus to be. You begin helping your new boss. Uh, you begin helping your new boss, fixing up old and broken cybernetics for the poor. You work hard every day for weeks on end. You don't mind a hard day's work, but your lack of sleep starts getting to you. Santa Bot says, you are a good person. You should have more points. You lose two points. <laughs> Let's see. You check to see. Ooh. Well, we ran out of time. What did you guys think of this more wholesome ending to like an ultimate volition tournament battle? Did you guys enjoy the action? Which version did you like better? When I played as Pierrot or when I played as Ventus? Definitely let me know in the comment section below and on our Discord. If you'd like to submit your own fighter to participate in the Ultimate Volition Tournament, all you have to do is hit me up in the comment section below or on our Discord and let me know what the fighter's name is, what their powers are, why they're fighting in the Ultimate Volition Tournament, and uh, give me like a quick description of your character's appearance. Preferably, uh, please give me all that information in six sentences or less. I recently was given a character submission that I was able to fit into an episode, but I wasn't able to give the character everything that uh, the person asked for because the person just put in so much information. Uh, so definitely make sure that you keep it to six sentences or less. Uh, this restriction comes from AI Dungeon 2's world info, only being able to hold so much information in the first place. Um, but thank you all once again for tuning in. Make sure you share this video with your friends, especially if your friends are into AI Dungeon 2 videos, over-the-top action, crazy adventures, etc. This channel does a daily AI Dungeon 2 content. Um, if you guys like ongoing AI Dungeon 2 series that have stories and recurring characters and build up like huge lore, definitely check out my series Jet Starlight and Xena Fairy Monster Hunters. It's a show that is now nearing the end of its fourth season that I plan on doing indefinitely. So every day, just a new episode of Just Starlight and Dana Fairy Monster Hunters until I die. Uh, that's the goal. We'll see what happens. 
Uh, but anyways, I hope you guys um, are enjoying all the daily AI Dungeon 2 videos, that you are sharing these videos with your friends so they're able to join in on all the fun uh, and talk about characters and submit like scenario ideas for me to play. Uh, speaking of submitting scenarios, feel free to submit safe for work AI Dungeon 2 scenarios for me to play in the comment section below or on our Discord. Make sure they have a defined goal because then I can try to speed run them in 30 minutes or less. Anyways, uh, enough promotion. Thank you all once again for tuning in. This is your host, your friend, your boy, Jeff Left One Only. Logging out. Peace, and don't forget to subscribe.